something that's inside of you, like you don't think about the people around you, audience or stuff like that, because you, it's manifesting your soul. And sometimes if you stop playing and say, I ain't gonna play again, you end up right back playing because it's like it calls you back. Say, come, this is where he belongs. The Steel Band After School program primarily works with low-income, disadvantaged kids. We focus on areas and schools that do not have, where the kids don't have opportunity for quality private music instruction. It's, it's a way to give kids opportunity that they would never have otherwise. And they get free classes and free transportation. One, two, three, four. My first class was a little bit hard because I was new to it. Okay, so I want you to do this part. When you start, they show you what do you um, do, and they write the stuff, the letters, and you just play them. It feels great because our teacher, Mr. Cecil, teaches different kinds of songs. I show my mom the music I play, and she's really proud of me. Did you have it yet? Yeah. I only have this. Look at this. How come you don't have the other one? The community where I'm from, Laventil, which is where the steel drum was invented, it's a big thing. They have a saying that when desperados go to town for Panorama, anybody could go in Lamantin and thief everything they have because the whole hill comes down to support their band. It was invented before I was even born. And it came from, because we had slaves in Trinidad and they stopped them from beating drums and they find it something else in order to be to make music. It evolved these huge biscuit tins and all different sort of stuff, and then one guy decided to use the oil drum, and that's how we have the size of steel drum right now. Seeing how steel band developed in Trinidad and all these areas where the kids didn't have opportunity, I always said that I would love to start a program here because it's an instrument the kids love. I felt it was something that would kind of uplift them, give them pride, and uh, give them something to work toward. And, and once they were able to achieve learning how to play, then you know they would uh, maybe take that back into their school and do well in school as well because of all the skills that they learned, memorization and focus and listening, all those different things. Everybody that I meet, they say, what do you do? I say, I teach kids to play steel band. Okay. And they said, oh, that's so beautiful. And that makes me feel good because people here seem to think about the kids a lot because they are the future. And anything you can do in a kid's life to make it better, I think you're doing a good job. Like Roman, the oldest student, and many times he brought tears to my eyes because I remember we played for the Breakfast of Champions and I had to open for him. He was still maybe about seven to eight years old and he played the National Anthem of America. And when I heard him, it was so touching that I knew I did something good for him. When I tell people around I play steel drums, they're like, whoa, that's pretty cool because not a lot of people hear about the steel drums. It brings more opportunities than I would have if I wasn't playing the steel drums and more experiences. The first year we had the F1 track here 
and we had a performance on Second in Congress during the uh, festivities. It felt kind of like, oh my gosh, this is real. Like what I'm doing is more than just an after school activity for me now. Like I'm going out and I'm performing in front of these crowds and like I'm becoming a part of the community, I guess. I would love to see a much larger space just filled with students. And with a larger space, we can also bring in more people to see what's going on and come to the rehearsals and the classes and see the kids and again, be more like the pan yards in Trinidad, but at the same time, be a, a large cultural force in Austin as well.